Hello everyone and welcome to the Cherry Heart Podcast. I'm Sandra and this is the Christmas Special. Before I launch into it, let me do my usual spiel, which is to say that you'll find the show notes for this podcast on my blog, which is cherryheart.co.uk. Um, if you click the three lines in the corner, that will give you the menu tab, and you can just click podcast or show notes, and that will get you there. Um, you can find me around the web as Cherry Heart, and I'm on Instagram as Sandra Cherry H R T. And I'll also pop in video chapters for this episode. So if you go to the uh, bottom of the screen, there'll be you'll see sort of little segments. Or if you go to the description box underneath, I'll have headings, and you can just jump to the heading you want. So how are you? How have you been? It feels like an absolute eon since I've podcast again. Um, I have been vlogmasing though, so I sort of feel like I've kind of seen you, but at the same time, well, seen you, um, but at the same time, I've completely lost track of whatever I talked about. Two weeks I can manage, that kind of works out. Three weeks is too much and it all just falls out of my brain. But um, we'll see how we get on. First of all, I think I'll talk about the things that I've finished making with you, which I think is mostly things you haven't seen at all yet. So the first thing that I made sort of early December was some lovely snowflakes. So let me show you those. This was the first one I made. Isn't it beautiful? Now these are all by Julia Hart, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce her Instagram name so I'll pop it down below. And I'm not entirely sure of the name of the um, snowflakes either so I'll put those in show notes. I forget which ones which, there's like crystal lore and elm lore and winter lore and things. But yeah so that's the beautiful white one and then I think this was the same pattern but I had a go in my gold thread to see how that would come out. And I really like how that looks. That's super pretty. Um, then I tried a larger one. This is so pretty. So these white ones that I'm showing you, I'm made in Stylecraft. Um, the natural yarn, which is the cotton bambino mix. So they're quite sort of drapey, so they wouldn't be any good if you wanted them as actual hanging snowflakes. But um, to be honest, I made them without anything in mind for them. I just wanted to have a go because I thought they were pretty. And I've started putting my um, like candles on, so they're sort of just a little mat to put my candles on when I put them on on the fireplace. So that's how I've been using for them. So it doesn't matter that they're a bit floppy for that because they've just got to sit down. And then the gold thread. Now this is actually um, Twilly's gold fingering. Um, I got it absolutely years ago and I've had it in stash forever. And when people have been asking me what I've used, they've said that the um, Twilly's is now discontinued. So um, I've also got a silver one here as well to show you. I think that one's a different design again but that's the same thing that's the Twillies as well um, but there is a different brand now because I ran out of gold myself excuse me a minute <coughs> um, yes there is a different brand which is an anchor one and I think it's called I think it's just called metallicized or something anchor metallicized thread or crochet thread 
Um, so I've ordered some of that. Well, it's arrived, but I haven't actually tried it yet. So I'm hoping that that will be a good substitute. I hope so. Um, and they have got quite a range of colours, so that's quite nice. But I just got a couple of golds. I wonder if I've got them to show you, actually. No, I don't have them to hand, unfortunately. I've been tidying up because I've got a lot of projecty stuff around the place, so I had to have a tidy up. So I must have got rid of them, uh, you know, put them up when I was doing that. But maybe I'll show you next time. Um, yes, but hopefully that will work out well. And then after I made the snowflakes, I thought, and they weren't as bad as I thought, because some of them are quite intricate. This one particularly has got a lot of, lot of um, front post and back post type stitches in it and things. And I thought, well, they look so complicated. I wonder how I'll get on with them. But they were actually fine. So then I thought I'd have a go at this one. So this is, um, I saw it on someone's Instagram thread. I think it was chalk legs. She'd made one I thought, oh my goodness, that's so beautiful. But it does look quite intricate and daunting as a pattern. But I did have a look and I found the pattern. It's called the Viola Do uh, Doily. And it's a Japanese pattern, so it's all, um, it's just a chart. But actually it was okay to do. Um, I thought it was fine. I'll link, obviously, all the patterns and um, in show notes, wherever I can. And um, where possible, I try to find the pattern link that isn't on Ravelry, um, just in case you're one of those that have been experiencing any problems with Ravelry and um, the ongoing... Uh, you know, if it's an ongoing problem for you, I know they have made some de design changes, but I don't think it's fixed the problems still for a lot of people. Um, I know because I had a problem with the original design. It certainly hasn't fixed everything for me, but it has got it to a level where I could probably use it as long as I don't use it for too long. So I do try to find the off Ravelry pattern links where I can, um, but if I can't, I'll just put the Ravelry one. But I do put a little you know, in brackets that it's a Ravelry link if it's on my blog. Um, so that you know. Um, and then in my video description box underneath, just, just on Vlogmas, this is if I've had a Ravelry link, the actual, the whole Ravelry link, the whole link is written out when you post it into YouTube. So I haven't actually put that it's a Ravelry link because obviously it says www.ravelry, blah, blah, blah. So I figured you could kind of work that out for yourselves. <laughs> um, yes, but I just keep lifting this up to show you. I'm quite pleased with this. It didn't take that long to do, actually. And these little... did to use up a awful lot of yarn. It's got all these sort of popcorns and things all along the edges. But it's just so pretty. And I've had this one I've got in my dining room. And I'm putting either a candle on there or various different whatever I've got out in the dining room. Fruit bowl or something just to put on it. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. And this is in the style class natural as well. Just I had some of this on hand and this, I think this is just the white colour. There might be an off-white one, I'm not sure. I will check and pop that in the show notes for you as well, but it might be like an ivory or something. But yeah, I had it to hand and it was nice to use for this. It gives good sort of stitch definition, I think. So doilies just because, and snowflakes just because. And the next thing to show you is a hat that I've made, which is this one here. So the pattern is this one, which is the Tensmere hat. And that's by my lovely friend Sam, Sam of Betsy Makes, Samantha D Designs. Now, she made this rather beautiful hat. You can't see her lovely colours in here because we've only got black and white. But she made hers in Aran weight yarn. And I didn't have anything in Aran. So my original idea was I was going to pick out... Let me just put this away. I was going to pick out some four-ply yarns and use it held double. So I picked out... I was showing you actually last time when I was talking about um, Christmas plans. So if you were here before, you might have seen that. But then I started, I found some um, like half used balls. I thought, well, they'd be enough 
yardage wise for what I need and I had a grey and a pink and a sort of mustardy colour picked out and I was going to sort of do a little swatch and sort of see how they came out but then through my door from Lovecraft came this beautiful new yarn from Debbie Bliss I'll find the name <coughs> It's hard to have everything to hand when you're doing this business. Here we are, Merian. That's the label look. And it's actually a chunky weight yarn. So this is 100 grams, which gives you 100 meters, 50% wool, 50% acrylic. Um, and I think I also have in here yeah, so it came with this little booklet um, showing you some of the patterns they've come up with for it and things but also a little um, sample of the colours which are really beautiful aren't they so they sent me, what did they send me? Oatmeal, which is this one, number six, and then the gold, which is this one, number four. But they're just really pretty. Look at that mint. Don't even know if you can see that very well. There you go, that's a bit better, isn't it? Really lovely. Love the powdery pink at the end, of course. And some really lovely natural sort of colours in there as well. Really beautiful, actually. I'm not a big one for using chunky yarn, so it's a shame that it's um, quite such a thick yarn. But it feels amazing. They came through as these nice, I'll put a picture in actually, these nice sort of big nice big fluffy ones <laughs> they were nice big fluffy balls if you're there yeah <laughs> that's what i've got left of the oatmeal but i don't know if you can see as well on here i'll try and show you close up it's actually a single ply so it's like a see it will actually untwist slightly uh what do they call it when it's like that i forget now some sort of weaving term it probably says in all that gum. But yeah, it does sort of, it will kind of open up and become untwisted relatively easily. So it does catch a little bit on the needles. You can sort of split it if you're not careful. But, oh, it feels amazing. It's so soft. Anyway, so as soon as that popped through my door and in those two colours which I was contemplating using, I thought, well, oh, that would be perfect for the hat not thinking about the weight obviously and then when I realized I thought of course thought can I make it work anyway so I did just about and I think I just about got away with it basically I should have stuck to Sam's pattern really it would have been better I reduced the stitches um because obviously chunkier yarn it would have been way too big if I just knit it as was. So I reduced the repeat and I reduced the stitches for the rim and I kind of just guessed and luckily that sort of seemed to work out okay. Um, so that way is fine. The only problem I think is by the time I've knit the pattern in I'm actually quite high up on the hat because it's chunky on so if I'd then carried on and knit all the other rows that Sam said afterwards I would have had a really long hat so I think with retrospect I would have started the pattern so sort of pretty much on the brim just to give myself a little bit of space before it comes in but I think you can still see the hat's okay the um, tree's okay rather so I think it's okay but yeah obviously it would have been easier as per usual if I actually stuck to what the pattern said rather than trying to do my own thing and then I had quite a bit of the gold left so I thought I'd do a nice pom-pom with the gold. Shall I see if I can put it on to show you? Not my favourite things, wearing hats. 
It's a little bit long, like I say, I had to have it a little bit longer just to fit the just to fit the tree pattern in. But I like it all the same. But yeah, if I ever made another one I would definitely stick to what Sam said <laughs> and do it properly. But I do like it though. And it is soft and warm and lovely. Pop that down there. Um, what else have I finished? Oh, this. Mm -hmm. So let me open it out to show you. This has appeared on the Vlogmas if you are watching that. And if you are watching it, by the way, just thank you ever so much. I've had a, just really, really lovely comments on that. And um, yeah, a really great response. So thank you ever so much if you're watching it. Oh, I've got a frog in my throat. Um, if you're watching it and you've enjoyed it or commented or yeah, it's just really nice to see that you're enjoying them. I quite enjoy making them. So, so here it is, hard to show off. It's quite large. Let's get it up to the camera so you can see the pattern nicely. So it's got this lovely lace pattern and then a garter stitch section. I really like the way she's done the borders. So that's sort of knit in and this is at the end. Just looks really lovely. And then that's the sort of long edge where you make the increases so it just it's really neat and it sits really neat and I did block it and that's what I showed in the vlogmas me blocking it but it did actually lay reasonably flat before that but it's just even more beautiful now so the pattern is called the Donny shawl or Dooney I'm not quite sure that I say it correctly um and it's I think it's by Greta Menson I'll pop it below obviously um but yeah, just a really, really lovely pattern. I really enjoyed working on it. And this yarn was Eden Cottage Yarns, which I'm just looking down here because, oh no, it's here. I think I can, yeah, I've got one. I've got a couple of balls left. So it's their Milburn DK. And this colorway is the Althea shade. And it's 85% blue face, less than 15% silk. So really, really lovely to use that was. So I've probably got enough to make something else as well. Maybe I can make matching mitts. That's a favourite of mine <laughs> to make with shawls. Um, yeah, let me show you it on. So this yarn was yarn that I actually got for my mum for Mother's Day. But... Um, mm. What with lockdown, I ended up not giving it to her for Mother's Day because that was back in March for us, and that was when we were in lockdown. And although I did end up actually getting it to her eventually um, in the summer, unfortunately, she didn't have time to use it before she passed away earlier this year. So I just wanted to have it and make something with it. This last few months, it's just been a very nice thing to do. It's felt like, I don't know, it's the sort of way of keeping her close, I suppose. And yeah, and it's just sort of nice that sort of thought that I can hug myself up in it as well. Not that I'm wearing many things. I'm not going out anywhere. I tend not to wear sort of something like this when I'm just walking the dog or something, which is pretty much all I'm doing, or dropping the child off at school, or picking her up from school. Um, yeah, but I'm really happy with it. And I really, it was nice to be able to, I took it quite slowly, and it was nice to be able to do that for once, because I'm not normally very good at doing that. <laughs> normally I get a bit of a race on, especially as I get towards the end of projects, but this one just, 
I don't know, I suppose I wanted to make it last as well because it was sort of felt nice to be working on it. I think that is probably all the finished things that I've got to show you today. I'll take the shawl off because it's, it's actually reasonably warm. Sat here. I'll put it too close to the candles I've got going. So I've got my little gingerbread house there with cinnamon candle in for extra Christmasiness. And obviously we're sat by the tree. And when I've got my Christmas top on as well, look, a little Christmas pudding for you. Um, this is what um, me and my husband like to call my Val Doonican episode, where I come and sit by the tree and chat to you all. It's all very um, old school and cliched, isn't it? <laughs> but I enjoy it, so hell, why not? Um, where was I? Oh yes, things I'm making at the moment. So the first thing I have to show you that I'm making, I think, is this. So, and this is another sad thing actually. She sent me this as a gift. I showed you this last time, if you were here last time. That's my, um, it's a kit for a little embroidered heart. I was hoping to have it ready to show you this by now, but I haven't quite got that far. But I have done the embroidery. Look at that, it's so pretty. So, so pretty. So that was a lovely little thing to do. Um, it didn't take too long, but it's so nice and relaxing embroidery somehow. I just find it completely relaxing. But those little red French knots on there. Oh my God. It really sort of started to ping when they're on. Even the back's not too bad. For me, not too bad, is it? Um, yeah, so all I've got to do now is sew that together. It came in this lovely little kit, so I've got the stuffing and everything for it ready to go and a hanger for it. So I've just got to get myself up into the uh, craft room and get that done to finish that off. Um, it's Pretty Fabrics and Trims, the kit is from. But yeah, so that's been enjoyable. And then on the same vein, my lovely Sam again, um, she made me up an advent calendar. Oh my god, I've been enjoying it so, so much. It's just been lovely. It's full of the most thoughtful, wonderful things. She's put some yarn in there, some bits of fabric in there, and just uh, all sorts of things. And one of the things that was in there was this little hostage kit. This cute little pussy cat and dog on there. So I've made a start on that as well. So I put my threads on here. I just hole punched the sides so I could put my threads on because it's got the little cross stitch design on the back. And I've made a little start on it. So I actually started with this cream of the dog's nose because that's what was on like the central cross, which is where you're supposed to start, I believe. But oh my goodness, I had such trouble seeing the cream on the white. I mean, I did do it in the evening, so the light wasn't brilliant. Well, actually it wasn't even the evening, it was the daytime, but you know, it sort of gets, the light isn't always that great even in the day at the minute, is it, in winter? Oh, up until this year, my close eyesight has been really good, but this year I've really started to notice I'm doing that old I'm gonna have to take that to the window to see it thing. Yes, yeah, so I did struggle a bit with the cream on the white, but the brown and the other colours. I did the brown last night and the black last night. Oops, so I've managed to get the other colours in. So I've got quite a bit of white to do for the edging around the sort of little hat. Um, so I don't know how that will go, but I 
at least I can see the rest of what I'm doing now and I've got something to sort of work off of. It's always easier when you've got something on you can see how the rest of the pattern's going to play out, isn't it? So those are some nice little stitching things I've been working on that I've been really enjoying. Um, what else am I making? I do have another thing to show you. Oh, I have another two things to show you. So we'll start with this one. Okay. Well, that looks a bit blah on the camera, doesn't it? Um, which is my, is it dust of snow? I can never remember what it's called for some reason. Snow of dust? Dust of snow. Dust of snow. Um, wrap, which is by Helen Stewart. Actually, I think I've got the pattern in here. I did print it all out. Okay. Uh, but it's actually really thick. There's like a gazillion pages to it. So I ended up just taking the last page with the charts on and working from that. <laughs> I mean, I've heard um, people say about the Helen Stewart patterns before because she writes out every row and she has them all like listed so you can tick off each one as you go, which is really great. And it sort of has the percentages in, which I can see is really great. And if you're working for a shawl, it's sort of quite motivating to get to the next bit. But when you've got this, which has got repeat this section, repeat that section, repeat the first section, repeat another section, and you're literally just writing out the same instruction again, over and over and over and over again, it does make for a very big pattern. <laughs> I just found it a bit bulky to be carrying around, yeah, so. Oh, and the other thing was, is I made a slight modification to it. But anyway. Yes, this is what I have so far. Obviously I haven't got on very really quickly with it and I'm obviously not keeping up with the advent style of it. It's supposed to use 24 advent minis and I'm on, how many am I on there? One, two, three, four, five. I'm just about to start my six. So I'm a little bit behind but that doesn't matter. I shall just go at my own pace. But the individual yarns I'm using a mixture of my West Green Loss yarns and my Dandelion and Dogwood yarns. These are advent calendars I had last year. I haven't got any yarn advent calendars this year. Um, but yeah, I just sort of tipped them all out. If you've seen my Vlogmas, you would have seen, but I sort of tipped them all out and just sort of played around with them and came up with a palette that I quite liked. Um, but yeah, they're all just gorgeous. I'm going to try and see if I can show you this one close up. Look at the speckles in there. It's so pretty. And look at my gorgeous little progress keeper. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. This was a gift from my gorgeous friend, Marcia. Thank you so much, Marcia. I haven't actually opened the other bit yet, but I did just whip this bit off the top because <laughs> it was all parceled up beautifully. So I've put it under the tree, but this bit was sitting there and I thought well, that would look really nice on my little dust of snow wrap. So that's what I did. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got all my lovely minis and I'm holding it double with some mohair yarn. This is the Dandelion and Dogwood one. And I think it's called something like She's Naked or because it's, I think it's undyed, or clean sheets, or something like that. I shall look in a minute, because um, I've got another one. Um, yes, so I seem to have trouble with this project. I don't know why, it's a little bit of a mixed bag for me. On the one hand, I absolutely love it. I love the minis, the colours make me very happy just looking at them. Let's show you with the ones I've got left and um, you can't really see them all actually they're falling down but yeah just really subtle beautiful colors in there i'm trying to get the best angle to sort of show you there well, that's better isn't it and um, so i've taken all the sort of blues out i've kind of faded from sort of one color into the next so i've done most of the blues now and I'm about to start, this will be my next colour, about to start on a greeny one. Um, 
yeah, so that aspect of it makes me really happy. And the pattern is perfectly well written and perfectly easy to follow, very clear actually, very well laid out, you know, no problems whatsoever there. But for some reason I seem to have a bit of a mental block with it. I don't know why, I just keep going wrong. This first section, oh, I just went wrong so many times. I don't know what was going on. My end is still a bit sort of kinky because I kept messing up the bit at the end. And I don't know if I was miscounting, but I sort of corrected and then found out I didn't need to correct and then I sort of went wrong again. I don't know. I don't I don't know what I was doing. I think I just picked this up when I eventually sort of got my colour sorted out and got everything ready. It was quite into December. Not that that matters because I'm not doing it as an advent thing anyway, but I think I was just so tired by the time I came to pick it up and I wanted to do it. And I'd pick it up in the evening and then, yeah, I think I just <laughs> wasn't really functioning on all, on all cylinders by that point, so the poor, so the poor knitting suffered rather. Um, yeah, so this first panel, you have to do make ones to get, it's sort of, I don't know if you can see it, kind of zigzag slightly, so you're sort of doing increases and decreases to get the up and down effect. And to do the increases, you're doing make ones, and they're sort of make one left, make one right. Which I always have trouble remembering which way around to do them. It's always sort of froze me a bit. So that was making me pause. And then the sort of direction of the make ones confused me a bit, because she, I can't remember what it was. But they seemed to be pointing like that way at each other. Whereas I felt, sort of, my natural instinct was that they would lean out as the stitches lent out, that the that you would make the make ones lean out. But the pattern actually has them going in, but the stitches are going out. So I think, like, my instinct of how I thought it would go and how the actual pattern does go kept clashing. So I think I kept just messing it up even more than I would normally in my normal confusion over make ones. So, uh then on, there's like another couple of sections, so there's, you do this one, then you do this one here, that's a bit more holy, and then you're supposed to go back to this one. But to be honest, this one put me off so much that I thought, I'm just going to abandon that. Um, and so I'm just using this one and this one now, and I'm just alternating between those two. And I think it just, it's, it just seems to sit better on the knitting to me. It seems to sit, whereas this one at the bottom, I don't know if you can see, but it's... Oh, let's try and hold it flat so you can see. It's kind of making it all ruck up, like it's pulling it a little bit too tight for the stitches. Whereas this sort of sits nicely here. I mean, I'm sure it'd be fine if I block it. But it just... I just felt like it wasn't sort of sitting particularly nicely once I'd got that pattern in. So I'm missing it out. I almost, almost went ripped back and got rid of it out of the bottom here, but I couldn't quite face it, what with the mohair as well. And this was, you know, after I'd tried the second one, I thought, well, that's much better. Looks much better than that, in my opinion. I think I shall just do, you know, I think I, sh I shan't do this one in the future. So I thought, oh, shall I go back and rip that out? But I thought, because it's Christmas knitting and it's supposed to be enjoyable, it's supposed to be. I wouldn't bother. It's like some of the mistakes I've made, a couple of them I had to sort of go back and correct because it was just throwing all the pattern off, but some of them where I could just sort of bodge it to get the stitch count right, I've just bodged it because I'm just not in the mood to be fussing around with it too much. I just want to sit down and knit something relaxing. So yeah, I've not wanted to faff with it too much. But anyway, now I've sorted out my, missed out this bit, and I finally, the pattern is starting to sink into my head a little bit, I think. It's starting to become a bit nicer and knit again now. <laughs> yes. I think it's just, to be honest, even this was last week when I was sort of having trouble with it, even this week I still am picking it up and I'm mostly you know, I knit a row, 
and then knit the front, knit the back and then sort of put it down and kind of rest for a little while and then I'll perhaps knit another couple of rows and then rest. I don't know, I can't seem to just sort of, normally I would be just sitting there going Ch -ch 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 all night. I don't know, I can't seem to, I haven't got it in me at the minute. I think it's just Christmas fatigue, I think is what it is. Not fatigue with Christmas, but fatigue caused by Christmas organisation and planning. I thought because, you know, all the corona business and we can't do so much, I would have thought December would have been easier somehow, but certainly not panning out that way for me. I think because my little one had all her mocks, so I've been making sure to sort of take her in and pick her up, but also, you know, sort of taking her in and picking her up at different times, depending on what exam she's got, and then, you know, sometimes she'll just be in the morning or just be in, in the afternoon, so it's been quite a bit of running around, you know, you go up there, come back, sit down, have a cup of tea, and go, go pick her up again. <laughs> so, I suppose I haven't had much time for doing things, really. Anyway, her mocks are over now, so that's all done, so hopefully, hopefully things will start to calm down a little bit now. Um, so that one I'm working on, and probably will be working on for some time to come. <laughs> and then my last working process, process every single time I say process instead of progress my last work in progress is in this gorgeous gingerbread bag this little um, balls on and I've just got some little jingle bells on that I was using for stitch markers so this is a Betsy makes bag as well it's another Betsy Makes show here and I am making socks. These have sort of become my work on in the car socks. I kind of grab them whenever I'm going to pick her up at the minute. So most of this progress has happened on the road as it were or in the car park actually. Um, yes. So just a plain vanilla sock. I've done my fish lips kiss heel. I did my little one round of um, the brighter colour before I went switch to the plain colour for the rest of the cuff and then I've just done stripes. Now to me this stripe, these plain colour stripes look wider than the multicolour stripes but they're the same number of rows. I don't know, is that just me? I don't know if it's an optical illusion or the yarn is actually slightly different. But I wish these were a bit smaller. I'm not incredibly happy with it. It looks quite cute though. The yarn's kind of cute, but yeah, I wish I'd done smaller stripes. But there you go. I ain't undoing that either. So I've got, again you will have seen this on Vlogmas, so apologies if this is repetitive. I've got this one which is by Stranded Dye Works and it's called Street Art. And this is in my stash down pile. Because I do love it and it is gorgeous but at the same time I've had it a long time and probably a little bit more colourful than I would pick now in all honesty. So it is gorgeous. And then this is a wool barn one in ballet slipper. And I just thought they would be cute together. Why did I think that? Because I was inspired by Emma of Potter and Bloom who did the Birds of Feather Shawl. And she had a speckled pink yarn, similar-ish to this. And I think she had a sort of pale pink mohair. Um, anyway, it looked gorgeous. I didn't have any mohair and I think she needed two skeins of this maybe for the shawl and I only had one but I thought socks would work I could do the same thing with socks so yeah that was my idea so that was totally Emma's idea actually um yeah but like I say it's okay I shall carry on making those on the school pickups until the end of term and then maybe they might progress a little bit quicker after that <laughs> maybe 
And then normally now I talk about pips, patterns in progress. Um, haven't actually got anything in progress at the moment, but I have got something that I've released. Um, which is my, yes, yeah, so these are my sugar icing socks. So I think, again, I showed you these last time. But they weren't out at the time but the pattern is now out so i won't talk about these a great deal but just to let you know the pattern for these is now out and there are two versions it's basically very similar but one has got a cuff written in and the other is cuffless so it just starts directly with the lace pattern and goes straight into it so this one I did alternate colour for the heels and the toes. That's not written into the pattern. I just decided to do that because I thought it would look pretty. And then these ones I just did plain. So you can just choose whether you have a cuff or not on the top. That's the only difference between the two versions. Yes, that came out was it last week or maybe even the week before. So if you bought a copy of that, thank you ever so much. Um, I hope you're enjoying it. And yeah, just to let you know here that that is out now, so I shall pop the links for that in the show notes as well, of course. So you can have a look at that if you want to. Um, and my last section, my last traditional section, is incoming goods. And I have a few incoming goods. Zipper noise. <laughs> so this was an order I placed with Dandelion and Dogwood. And it's her Christmas colourways. And that she launched a little while ago. And I got the bottle bottle brush? <laughs> bottle brush Christmas trees this is. And I've actually got four of these. Because I wanted enough to make a garment of some kind. Isn't pretty, pretty, pretty? What was I saying? Yes, I think Amy and Jen, who ran Dandelion and Dogwood together, I think they just have a touch of absolute magic. I mean, all of the advent calendar colourways from last year are just gorgeous. And all of her Christmas colourways she came out with this year are just gorgeous. And I keep shoving this in your face because I'm looking at it on the screen myself going, it's just gorgeous. I love it. So beautiful. Yes, yeah, so I couldn't resist that. So that's my kind of end of year treat to myself. And I also got some mohair. It is She's Naked. That's what I'm using for my Dust of Snow wrap as well. So I got four of these as well. So it's enough that I could hold it double with this if I wanted to. But actually I've started using some for my Dust of Snow wrap now. So I don't know how many I'll have left. But that's okay. I hadn't particularly decided that I would definitely hold them together, but I just wanted that as an option. But I can always get some more if I definitely need to. But I just wanted to have some to hold with things. I was also thinking of doing a different hat as well, where I held this with something. Um, sometimes, like in my stash down yarns that I've sort of selected that I want to get through, some of them it's because they're sort of brighter than I would really choose now. So sometimes if you hold something like this with it, it can just tone it down enough that it'd be a bit nicer maybe. Or a bit more what I want now maybe. So that was the other idea. Yeah, so I got four of those as well. But yeah, so happy with these. It's one of those ones where I really can't use it straight away. I need to 
hold on to it for a while and admire it. So I should probably have it up on display in my craft room for a bit. So um, when I'm back up there, I'm not going up there so much at the minute just because, partly because it's full of stuff, I've been sort of hoarding Christmas things up there, and partly because it's quite cold up there and although it heats up quickly, his husband working from home at the minute and having to heat up the house anyway, it seems a bit daft to heat up another area whereas I could just be down here. Doesn't seem very cost efficient either, so yeah, I've kind of not been up there too much. Although I do want to go up and do my sewing and make my, um, finish my heart. I've got some other sewing to do as well actually. Um, but that's not relevant to this at the moment. Just try to think if I've got anything else to talk to you about. Um, I don't think I have. I feel like I've forgotten things, but maybe that's just my usual, I haven't podcast for a while and I feel out of touch with everything. <laughs> I feel like I've forgotten everything. Um, yeah, maybe it's just that. But it's the last week of school now, so only a few days left and they'll break up. And then we've got quite a few days until Christmas itself, which is quite n nice. Normally I don't like it when there's a big sort of run-in after school to Christmas because it just gives the kids a chance to get completely bored. And, you know, they haven't got any new stuff, any of their Christmas presents to sort of do and play with or enjoy yet so they're just hanging around desperately waiting for the, the day to arrive but this year it sort of doesn't feel like a bad thing to sort of all be safely at home for a little while before we actually have Christmas. Um, yes so I think I'll be looking forward to that I'll be looking forward to not having to get up which is always nice because we have quite an early get up around these parts to get the old girl to school. Um, and yes, I'm um, just thinking about Christmas plans, that's what I was just thinking about. I am seeing my family for Christmas Day um, and we're going to perhaps do one other day as well, I think. But that's just one other. The way sort of our family breaks down, it's really quite hard to sort of do stick to the two family bubbles we've either got one family or a whole bunch of families <laughs> so since we can't do a whole bunch of families we're just doing the one family so um it basically means that i get priority this year rather than my husband which isn't great for him but at the same time i think he sort of understands with what we've been through this year on my side of the family it's I don't know, it just feels like we need to see each other for at least a little bit and uh, just be there for each other for a little bit because it's going to be a different Christmas for us. But it's going to be a different Christmas for everyone, isn't it? Let's face it. But yeah, I think we all need just to support each other a little bit this year. But uh, yeah, we want to keep things to a minimum, obviously, to try and, you know, make sure there's no adverse consequences. But yeah, I think hopefully it will work out okay. Um, yes, but I hope you've got some lovely plans, even if they are very different from your usual plans. I hope they work out well for you and everyone sort of has a good time. I think we're all sort of a bit determined to kind of make the best of it, aren't we? Um, yeah, there's always moments, isn't there? Even if things are a bit different or not how you expect, as you can normally find some sort of something, you know, good about the situation or some little moments to enjoy and. I think that won't be a problem for me either, you know, it's, we always have fun as a little threesome together and we sort of find ways to enjoy ourselves, so yeah, I think it'll be, 
think it will still be quite nice. Um, but yes, like I say, I hope you find the same. I hope you enjoy your Christmas, if you indeed even celebrate Christmas. It may be completely irrelevant, all that I'm just talking about now. But I hope you at least get to have a nice break and, you know, enjoy it that way. No matter what you do or how you celebrate or if you celebrate at all. But I'm really going to stop talking now because this is just pure 100% waffle. And I'm hoping to see you in a, well, at least one more Vlogmas before Christmas. Hopefully two if I can manage it. And, um... Yeah, thank you also to everyone else that's doing vlogs out there. I haven't enjoy I haven't seen as many as I normally would. I'm so behind. Normally I seem to manage to keep up at least with some of them, okay, but I'm really struggling this year. But there's so many nice ones out there, it's you know, you could watch hours and hours worth, couldn't you? Uh, yeah. So thank you if you're doing Vlogmas as well. I am in I am enjoying them when I get to them. Um but yes, that's it for me anyway, and I will see you in a brand spanking new year, 2021. Wow. Oh, and I might talk a little bit, or if there's any interest, bullet journaling. When I show my bullet journal, well I say bullet journal, I don't do much of the actual bullet journaling, it's more doodling in a notebook and sort of justifying it with a few notes but <laughs> um, when I do show it all, um, on the Vlogmas or on Instagram people quite often ask about it and I normally do a little bit of chat about it I could have talked about it this time actually couldn't I but anyway let's not get distracted and go off down that tangent but I was going to say so I might do sort of either an episode like a separate episode just a little bit about that just in case you're not interested or maybe I'll tack it on the end of a podcast or something so yeah if that's something that may be of interest to you because I normally sort of at some point over Christmas I get my new bullet journal and I kind of set it up it's become a little bit of a tradition lately and I really enjoy it to sort of sitting and sort of planning out some pages and you know it's just a bit relaxing sort of doing a few doodles and things it's I don't want to say it's art because it isn't what I do but at the same time to sort of be artistic and creative in that way is really quite relaxing and nice I'm finding that the most enjoyable thing about it now anyway so yeah I thought I might talk about that if anyone is interested if you think that's a good idea right I'm definitely going this time thank you for staying with me thank you ever so much for all your support throughout this messy mucky horrible old year but yeah thank you for being here and thank you for watching and I'll see you in the new year bye bye I don't know the name of it marvellous